Today I wanted to share with you a super simple strategy for getting a great looking lawn in the fall. This applies to anyone regardless of your enthusiasm for lawn care. By September, the length of your day and your night are about the same time. And as we push towards October, the nights actually start getting longer. That means the sun's intensity is decreasing as we go into fall and the heat is lowering off of their July peaks as well. Cool season lawns that might have been struggling through the summer are just about ready to come back into bloom, so to speak, all on their own. All we want to do here is give them a little bit of a nudge and an advantage going into fall. Now for warm season lawns, as summer comes to an end, lawn season kind of starts slowing down. Grasses stop growing so vigorously, but it's very uncommon for a warm season lawn to go dormant in the month of September. So this plan will work for those areas as well. Now, true lawn care fanatics will not use this plan. They'll actually embellish it to the point of over complexity, but their results will be better. But the fact remains that this simplistic approach is way better than doing nothing at all. It's far easier to implement, and you're going to see significant results doing this. To summarize this plan, we're going to end summer by killing off any weeds that are actively growing in the lawn. We want to do this as soon as possible so that the majority of the weeds don't go to seed in the fall. We're also going to fertilize the existing grass that we have in the lawn, no matter how thin or thick it may be. The reason that we do that is we want to promote spreading into the thin areas that might have died off during the summer or got killed off by, let's call it fertilizer burn, dog pee spots. And we want the rooting of our grass during the fall to be as vigorous as possible to help our grass get through the coming winter season. 10 days later, we're gonna go ahead and overseed the lawn with new grass seed to help fill in the truly bare areas and to help thicken out a lawn so that we can prevent more weeds next year. Now, I'm not gonna do any of this to my lawn. I actually take the advanced approach in my lawn. I'm gonna do it over here at Robbie's lawn, a project lawn of mine. Robbie's lawn actually used to be a jungle of weeds, but over the course of the past 15 months, through slow and steady improvement, whoa, there's a fishing, there's a fishing rod. It has become a very nice place for this family to spend time on. I mean, look at it back there. You got trampoline and green grass and, and it's just nice, but there's room for improvement. You can actually take a look at the Robbie's Lawn playlist, which I linked to down in the description below, if you want to see where we started and how we got to this point. All right, Robbie, we're going to put down a weed and feed product. I actually don't usually put weed and feed down, but this is literally the simplest way to do it. And this is the best time is really the only time of the year that I recommend weed and feed as an option. What we're going to do, we could use the Turf Builder uh, Triple Action, and that's going to have uh, weed killing power, grass fertilizing power, but it also has a weed prevention. That is an option only if you're not going to overseed. Now we do still have the need to overseed. So we're gonna use the regular weed and feed, the one that doesn't have the triple action on it. If we've got, which you don't, if we've got a cool season, or if we have a warm season lawn, um, typically you're looking at like centipede or St. Augustine grass, some of those uh, warm season lawns. You're not gonna use this one. You're gonna use the Southern blend the southern version of weed and feed uh, which uses atrazine uh, as its active ingredient here we're dealing with a cold season lawn so this is the product of choice this is found on big box stores pretty much everywhere maybe even your local grocery store carries this for 1,000 square feet we're going to measure out three pounds and stick it in the spreader and run around in circles. We're actually gonna have to split the lawn in half because of the trampoline. So we'll put it on half of the lawn, move the trampoline, and then we'll put it on the other half of the lawn. Work for you? Yeah. This particular product, this doesn't apply to all weed and feeds, but this product from Turf Builder has this weed grip, which means it's gonna kill the weeds better if we apply it to the lawn when it is wet. So what we've done over here is we actually ran the sprinklers this morning. So all of the leaf blades are still damp. According to the bag, 
you're gonna you're not gonna want to apply this to the lawn if your daytime temperatures are getting above 90 degrees it's best to do it under 85 but 90 is gonna be fine especially if you apply in the morning and that's another thing that we're doing here so we've got wet leaves and it's early morning so it's nowhere close to 90 degrees all right let's go for it Yeah, that's this one. Okay. So I think we decided three pounds. Three pounds for a thousand square feet. Are you measuring in ounces right now? Apparently. That's fine. All right, man. We're putting stuff on the grass so you don't want to walk on it, especially when it's wet. It'll stick to your feet. Now these granules are very small, so you're going to have this on a very low setting. I always recommend putting it on a lower setting than normal. That way you can run around the lawn a little bit more, so you're not like striping the lawn and you're getting better coverage. Takes a little bit longer, but not much longer. It's actually not a lot of weeds, especially here in the middle. Looking pretty nice. Do you have any questions? Yeah. So how long before I can water it now? Well, so we watered it before so that all of the stuff sticks onto the grass blades. Uh, it takes about, it's probably gonna be fine after a few hours, but you're safer waiting a full day before you water. That way, all of those little granules stick to the leaf blade for as long as possible. Uh, so you could water tomorrow if you want to, if you're due for it. Okay. And then mowing? Do I have to wait for that? Well, it'd be kind of similar, uh, but I'd wait probably about three days or so to mow. Okay. Um, the reason for that is when the herbicide gets absorbed into the weeds, like the leaf tissues of the weeds, um, it takes a while for that herbicide to get sucked down into the root to slowly start killing the stuff off. So even though... The herbicide might be in the leaf it might not actually get into the root for a few days so we want to wait uh, to give it a chance to get down there so uh, yeah your lawn already is a little shaggy which is fine towards the end of the summer so just let it go a little bit shaggier and then you could trim it down a few days later and then that actually brings up another point too after 10 days we're gonna go ahead and put the grass seed down we don't want to put grass seed down right now um, and we don't want to put grass seed down before we do this. Of course, we didn't do that. But um, the bag, so if you read deep into the label of the bag, it tells you to wait 30 days. So that would be the safest to wait 30 days before we put grass seed down. But in my experience, if we wait about 10 days, then it's fine because we'll put the grass seed down. And then it still takes time for that grass seed to germinate. So by the time the grass seed germinates, this product is almost never, almost never going to affect the grass seed whatsoever. And then again, if we were going to put down, if we were not going to put down grass seed, we would actually use the Turf Builder triple action weed and feed because it's going to stop uh, the winter weeds from germinating here in the fall. But that doesn't apply to us. Right now, as I alluded to in the previous segment, that whole segment over there at Robbie's line, uh, we were putting down the simplest plan, the simplest plan of attack to have a good lawn for the fall. Uh, but it's not the best plan. There are tons of different ways uh, to overcomplicate or just slightly embellish to make everything work better. And that's kind of what I'm going to be doing here in my lawn. Uh, as you see, I've got a smorgasbord of products on the lawn behind me. I'm going to go into a lot of your options. Uh, things that will, I don't know, let's call it supercharge. I don't know if that's the right word, but they're going to improve the plan that we're doing, the weed and feed plan that we're doing over at Robbie's Lawn. No matter how complex you make this, the three main things are exactly the same. You want to kill weeds whenever possible. You want to push your existing grass however possible in the best possible way. And then you're either going to add new seed to the lawn to thicken up thin or bare spots, or you're going to prevent weeds from germinating in the fall that will be a problem in the late winter and early spring. No matter how complicated you make this, those are literally the only goals. My fall fertilization options video 
will be out very soon. Depending on when you're watching this, it might be available already. And if so, it's linked right there in the corner. Make sure to watch it start to finish. I'm not pushing any particular plan in that video. I'm literally just explaining all of the various common options that you could take action on.